Hey there, this is Dr. Falcon, and today I want to unbox my brand new Google Nexus 5 phone and compare it to my old Galaxy Nexus phone. Um, I just got the 32 gigabyte version of the Nexus 5 in today. I ordered it on Halloween and it arrived today, which is November 4th. This uh, blog post will go up on the 5th. Anyway, uh, all I've done is removed the protective shield from this phone. I've measured it and I did the very initial setup but not the onboarding walkthrough. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unbox this, talk about what's in the box, compare it to the Galaxy Nexus. I know a lot of my friends own a Galaxy Nexus or even a Nexus 4. Kinda wanna get that comparison to see if they should upgrade or not. Um, the first thing that I noticed about this phone is how thin it is. It's much more thin than my Verizon CDMA version of the Galaxy Nexus. It's also consistently um, thick throughout the phone or consistently thin, whereas the Galaxy Nexus has kind of a fatter uh, bottom, fatter ass. Uh, what's rest in the box? We'll talk about dimensions in a second. There's one thing I already don't like about this phone and it's a way to eject the micro SIM card. And it uses this tool. I don't know if this is common for all micro SIM, um, but basically it's this little tiny special purpose tool uh, I don't have my SIM card yet, so I'm hoping that that doesn't get lost. Um, also, you'll get a wall adapter and a micro USB charger, which you probably have 50 of those already in your house. The next thing that's really weird about the Nexus 5 uh, packaging is that you get a quick start guide and it's in different languages, and that's fine, right? We kind of expect this these days. But I got two instruction manuals, or safety and warranty manuals, they're not even instruction manuals, they're identical. So these are useless anyway, I don't even know why these ship, but I got two, so that's lame. You don't really get a ton of goodies with the Nexus 5, but um, you know, this probably isn't your first radio. Having the charger is nice, I guess, but I don't even need that. So put all this stuff back in the box, may not ever open it again. Hope to God I don't lose this tool. All right, let's talk about dimensions. So, like I said before, the new Nexus 5 is thinner than the old Galaxy Nexus, even though it's got a larger screen. The phone is about a quarter of an inch longer than the original Galaxy Nexus, and they're the same width. So the screen is bigger on the Nexus 5 than the Galaxy Nexus. Now, the Galaxy Nexus is 0.4 inches thick at its thickest point, which is 13 30 seconds of an inch, um, the Nexus 5 is 0.34 inches at its thickest point, which is 11 30 seconds of an inch. Despite being a larger phone, the Galaxy, uh, sorry, the Nexus 5 is 4.2, 4.8 ounces, which means it's lighter than the Galaxy Nexus by 0.2 ounces. In the hand, the because of its weight and balance, the Nexus 5 seems a lot lighter than that 0.2 ounces would suggest. I have the regular battery in my Verizon Samsung phone, uh, Galaxy Nexus phone, but it just feels heavier, mostly in the bottom section of the phone. And this is an interesting thing that a lot of my friends who are iPhone users have commented on, and that the Galaxy Nexus feels really top heavy. Even though the Nexus 5 is a taller phone, since it is more balanced, I'm balancing it on two fingers here, I don't get that top heavy feeling. Whereas if I tried to do that with the Galaxy Nexus, uh, I feel like this section of the phone is a lot heavier and more prone to kind of wobbling, falling out of my hand. Um, all right, so let's talk about the screen and this onboarding experience. All I've done with this phone is connected it to my Wi-Fi. It immediately downloaded an update over the air update for KitKat. I have not inserted a SIM card and what we're about to do is um, kind of walk through the onboarding process. So one of the things that's really different with KitKat is uh, Google Now is more front and center. It also enables the OK Google uh, verbal start, whereas before you had to swipe up from the home key. Uh, so there's also a way to trigger it from the side. But anyway, here's this chalkboard and onboarding. The screen itself is beautiful. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you can see. Here's that nice screen. You'll notice a little bit of um, difference in the icons, like the camera icon has been redesigned. Uh, you know, you gotta keep Apple one step ahead of you with your flat icon design, so a little bit of a change here and there. I did notice with the Cyanogen Mod uh, build that I'm running on my Galaxy Nexus that the Pictures app also has a new icon, Photos. Um, 
So anyway, just a little bit of difference here in the launcher. Google Keep is now by default downloaded with 4.4. Uh, wallet, which is nice on the Verizon Galaxy Nexus that wasn't available. Phone icons redesign, settings icon redesign. From a hardware uh, button perspective, you've got your power button here on the right, and you have your volume up and down on the left. This, of course, is a big difference from the um, progenitor of this phone, which is the LG G2, which has all the controls on the back. The back of the phone has got a slightly rubberized finish to it, so it's a little grippy, but not too bad and um, it's already picking up some rough spots and some fingerprints. So we'll see how that goes as the phone ages. I don't put a case on my phone, but uh, I do keep it all by itself in a pocket. So we'll see how that wears over time. Speakers are on the bottom of the phone. That's okay, I guess. I don't really listen to um, audio or video to my phone just by itself. I either plug in a uh, external speaker or use Bluetooth in my car. So I don't really care too much about speaker quality. There is the uh, micro USB port, uh, port at the bottom and a headphone jack up at the top. The next thing I want to talk about is the camera. Um, the camera has been knocked a little bit in some of the reviews and frankly I'm not surprised. A lot of the Nexus phones have a bad reputation for uh, camera quality. However, just taking a few uh, test shots with this camera, I'm pretty impressed with it. I think the focus speed's a little slow. But um, color reproduction is not bad at all. I don't know if it's going to come out very well in the video, but um, it's pretty realistic. I do have a lot of overhead lighting in the room I'm shooting in, uh, but it looks really nice. And I definitely say it's an improvement over the Galaxy Nexus camera. So overall, just super initial impressions. Um, the phone is very nice. The screen's very nice. I'm really impressed by the form factor, how light it feels in the hand, how balanced it feels, and especially compared to the Galaxy Nexus, which is what I'm upgrading from. I do think it's worth it. I'm also getting off of my Verizon contract thanks to this phone. The 16 gig version is 349 and the 32 gig version is uh, 399 And basically the, the amount of money I'm saving every month by not being locked into Verizon is gonna pay for my phone in less than four months. So it's basically a free phone if you're gonna wind up using a year's worth of cell service anyway. If you've got a Galaxy Nexus, definitely say it's worth the upgrade. If you've got a Galaxy S4, I don't know, it's going to be tough. It's going to be depending on your budget and how much of a phone freak you are. If you've got an iPhone, you know I'm an Android guy. Anyway, we'll do a more in-depth review. If you like this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my blog at journal.drfalcon.com. Thanks for watching and enjoy eating that Kit Kat.